because I know when they go out there, they gonna be doing stuff. I'm not crazy, so I check up on them. I don't know what she's talking about. Miss Johnson, you don't have to explain to me. I'm friends with my nephew on his Facebook page, too. Saw text messages, photos between uh, my wife and, and some other cat. What did you see? You know, when you miss a person, you've seen them before. You know, nude photos. Oh! You know what I mean? I'm sick of all these little hookers trying to say my son is a daddy. Okay. I'm sick of it. I get babies dropped off here, dropped off there. I'm sick I'm not of it. Kids. But it, it stops what's today. Miss Johnson brings her son to court, armed with determination and an oversized handbag to prove he is not the father of Miss Longshore's child, Caden. Miss Johnson has big plans for her son's future, involving either a Nobel Prize or at least a stable job that doesn't require a name tag. She fears these dreams may be dashed against the rocks of responsibility if he's found to be Caden's dad. Meanwhile, Miss Longshore, confident in her maternal instincts that Mr. Lee is the one, seeks to close the chapter on her quest for Caden's biological dad, preferably before the next season of her favorite TV show starts. Just wait. The drama escalates in the next scene. You have brought your teenage son to court to get the results of a paternity test to prove that he is not the father of the defendant's son. You say you've always had big plans for your son's future and you're concerned that if this child is his, those dreams may now never come true. Ms. Longshore, you state that you are positive Mr. Lee is your son's father. Can you believe what's happening? The court delves into a plot thickened by Facebook messages, a mysterious potential father who may or may not resemble a famous movie star, and Miss Longshore's Herculean efforts to connect with Miss Johnson for a paternity test. Miss Johnson, who thought Facebook was just for sharing cat videos and not paternity disputes, was blindsided by Miss Longshore's friend request, turned life-altering notification, sparking doubts, and the inevitable march towards a paternity test showdown. Brace yourself. What comes next will catch you off guard. And just when you think it can't get any weirder, buckle up for the next bit. There's no reason for me to just accept a child when he was five months old when I got the Facebook message. But I told your son before he even hit five months old. He so did, he did. That's not my fault that your son didn't come and tell you. But you also told him that it wasn't his. So because he it felt... could have been a possibility it was somebody else's. Right, so that's why he didn't tell me. Because why face my wrath if he don't even know if this is his kid? Like, we never even saw her pregnant. We never saw pictures of her pregnant. Thank it was like, you. it was like just a baby out of nowhere. Pregnant. You were tagged in my sonogram before you deleted me. What are you talking Ooh, about? Who? Never added Beyonce me. Beyonce was. You never added me. Yes, I did. I, 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 I never saw a sonogram. I've never seen you on Facebook. Wait, we got to get some order in the court. Judge, please, can I say something? No, no, no. I'm on tagged in a sonogram. I want to understand. You tag his name in the sonogram. I tagged his Facebook in the sonogram, yeah. So what so my point is, did me. you tag him and the other guy? No. Your Judge, Anna, I'm his Facebook friend. She did that, I would have seen it, because that's why I have a Facebook page, to keep tabs on him, because I know when they go out there, they gonna be doing stuff. I'm not crazy, so I check up on him. I don't know what she talking about. Miss Johnson, you don't have to explain to me. I'm friends with my nephew on his Facebook page. Just when you thought daytime TV couldn't get any crazier, accusations of manipulation and lack of responsibility are voiced, with both parties defending their actions and intentions. This highlights the conflicting narratives and the challenges in determining accountability. At this point, it feels like watching a ping pong match where the ball is made of pure drama, and each hit back and forth adds another layer of he said, she said. The anticipation builds as we move to the climax. And guess what? The real drama is just around the corner. And so what happened that day? You couldn't find any football to think about? Like, what are you making it seem like this is just Look, me or something? They want like, no game on. How is it you just know? my fault? How is it just my fault? You had sex with me too. I didn't have sex with myself. Like, come on, now get it together. Why hey, didn't you think smart enough to When you're gonna come condom over on? every day and just throw it at me, I can't say no forever. No, if you're gonna come over every day and just throw it at me, I didn't me, come like, to your oh, you house every day. So stop lying. Stop trying to make me seem like I'm a hulk. Did you want to be more than a friend? I did like him, and he better. He needs to stop acting like he didn't like me back, because you was telling everybody at school that you liked me. I so stop acting too, like you did it. Judge. Uh -huh. you shut she down. Was, she, Don't do she it. She was a nice young lady. She seemed very respectful, and I thought she was cute. I didn't really have a problem with her. Even the day that she left, because both of us was homeless at the same time, staying at the motel, okay? That's where we lived. She left before I did. It took me um, about a year and a half to save up enough money to actually have an apartment to get out of the situation. And we didn't have anywhere to go because they don't have like shelters and stuff sitting around in Florida. You gotta make it happen. So that's what we did until I got the Facebook message and I'm shaking inside because I'm working two jobs. What the hell are y'all doing? Seriously. And that's, you're right. You are completely right. You are completely right. And this is how I feel. If you get pregnant, that should be your responsibility. And I am. Mama's baby, Papa's maybe, 
sweetie. And because I am. if he had the baby, I know that that's my grandchild. I'm sorry. So you gotta stand up and do something or fall for everything. Hold on to your hats because as the moment of truth unfolds in a room that's buzzing with tension, anticipation, and maybe a bit too much aftershave, the DNA results make their grand entrance, carried in by an overly serious lab technician who clearly missed his calling as a dramatic actor. With a flourish, he announces. But wait, there's more drama ahead than in an entire season of soap operas. Because whether he decides to use a condom or use protection, this is him or any man. Make the call. Because it's your body. You're absolutely And correct. every woman in this room that's a mother knows at the end of the day, that baby's looking right at you. And Mr. Lee? Yes, Your Honor. It's only so long you can hide behind your mother. Oh. Now, the results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. As it pertains to 18-month-old Caden Longshore, Mr. Lee, it is without question you are Caden's I told you! Told you! I got nothing left, nothing left to say. Kiss my... Can I see my grandchild, please? The gavel drops, and so does the bombshell. Mrs. Smith drags her soon-to-be ex-husband to court, itching to prove he's the daddy of their adorable munchkin, Christina, affectionately known as Cookie. Despite Mr. Smith's John Hancock on the birth certificate, establishing his VIP status in Cookie's life from day one, Mrs. Smith's doubtometer starts to ping like a microwave at dinner time as Cookie starts picking up traits that suspiciously don't include her dad's infamous snore. You won't want to miss what's next. Did you allow your husband to sign the birth certificate and initially believed he was Cookie's father? But as your daughter got older, she no longer looked like him. And now you believe another man is her dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. In the beginning, we actually met in middle school. Uh, we went out through, I, I want to say seventh, eighth grade. And then we reconnected after high school. All right, and you dated, fell in love? Th right. We actually got married. Okay. We actually ended up getting new phones around that time. And, you know, I saw text messages, some photos between uh, my wife and, and some other cat. What did you see? What was the exchange? I, I miss you. You know, when you miss a person, you've seen them before. You know, nude photos. Oh! You know what I mean? And nude photos of your wife or of the man? Excuse me, Your Honor. A little bit of both. Ever seen any of these alleged text messages that he's talking about? Did you send them? I mean, even if you haven't seen them, did you send them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then he's seen them. <laughs> so what happened, Mr. Smith, when you see these text messages with nude photos and I miss you? I basically, you know, I, I let my parents know what was going on and, and I, I packed up and I, and I left. I had to. So you then called your family member, your mother. Right. Just to, you know, because she's, she's my support. You know, she, she helps me on everything. You know what I mean? Can you believe what just happened? Just when you thought it was safe to change the channel, Mrs. Smith drops the pregnancy plot twist, hoping to glue their shattered love story back together with the news of their upcoming sequel, Baby Cookie. Mr. Smith, suddenly all hair ease and hope, views this baby bombshell as the universe's way of saying, let's give this soap opera another season. And just when you're catching your breath, get ready, because the next scene will have you spitting out your popcorn in surprise. I felt lonely around the time because my husband left me alone. So, yeah. You had sex with him. Yes, ma'am. Did you use protection? No, ma'am. Did you tell him you were married? No, I did not. Mm. And you believe that she is this man's biological child? Yes, Your Honor. Not your husband? No. I didn't feel like it was any need to bring it up to him because when me and Joseph hooked up, we were separated. I didn't tell my husband about it. But at the point you find out you're pregnant, shouldn't you at least put these cards on the table? because he's bonding with this child for two years. Correct. You won't believe what's coming next. The Grandmother's Perspective, featuring Tony Brooks, AKA the family's unofficial FBI agent. She dives deep into the soap opera that is her son's marriage, shedding light on the family drama with the finesse of a seasoned gossip columnist. According to her, the marriage's health meter is blinking red, signaling more drama than a season finale of your favorite TV show. Her colorful commentary doesn't just highlight the stormy seas of their relationship, but also the little life raft, their innocent child caught in the whirlpool. Through her eyes, we see not just the strain 
strain on the family fabric, but the occasional comedic relief that comes with dealing with her son, the kind of guy who thinks marriage counseling is a new TV series binge. Her take on the situation? It's a mix of concern, disbelief, and an unshakable hope that maybe, just maybe, her next family gathering won't feature in the emergency services diary. And hold on to your hats, because what comes next will knock your socks off. I've never thought they should have been together in the first place. I always feel like their relationship is just toxic. It doesn't work. At what point do you even find out about Mr. Prater? I kept asking him, like, what's wrong with you? Like, what's it? He wouldn't tell me. And he finally was like, look, I gotta show you something. And he goes, he pulls up the Instagram, just puts it out there. He was like, see, I guess you were right, Ma. But with that said, the truth is, is that you obviously didn't know that from that two-year point, Mr. Prater is still in contact and seeing Cookie as her father, mm -hmm. and your son is still functioning like Cookie's right. father. And Miss Smith, even though you opened up and told Miss Brooks the truth, you still were allowing Mr. Prater to see her behind your husband's back. I didn't even know any of that. And Mr. Prater, you did not know about Mr. Smith. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Smith, why? I just couldn't find the right time to say anything about it. When you have issues like this, the right time is the soonest time available because that means the child would have clarity. <laughs> Your child. In a courtroom so silent, you could hear a gavel drop. The moment of truth arrives like the season finale of a drama series nobody wanted to be part of. As the paternity test results unroll like a red carpet. And if you thought that was a doozy, the next twist is gonna make your jaw hit the floor. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Prater. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. I know that was not the news you wanted. The episode starts with a plot twist from a daytime TV drama featuring Ms. McBirth, her son Kakitho Hughes, and Ms. Jackson in a paternity puzzle worthy of a soap opera award. In the midst of baby mama drama, Ms. McBirth is throwing down the gauntlet, demanding a DNA showdown and slapping Ms. Jackson with a defamation lawsuit while Ms. Jackson stands her ground, insisting Howes is the baby daddy. Just when you think you've seen it all, the story takes an even wilder turn. You say you're stuck between your mother and your ex-girlfriend who are in a heated dispute in court today. Ms. McBurth, you petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove your son, Kakitho Hughes, is not the father of Ms. Jackson's two-year-old son, Elijah Jackson. You're suing Ms. Jackson for $1,000 for defamation of character because you claim she posted comments on social media claiming you and your family are deadbeats. In a move that would make any detective proud, Miss McBirth whips out a photo of her son and Alia faster than a cat Mimi spreading on the internet, claiming the family resemblance is about as strong as my diet willpower on a Friday night. This sparks a heated debate faster than you can say, who's your daddy? Turning the courtroom into a makeshift family reunion with a side of identity crisis. And if you thought that was intense, just wait for what's coming up. Throughout this roller coaster of paternity claims, photo evidence showdowns, and character critiques, one thing's for sure, the courtroom hasn't seen this much action since the judge discovered online shopping. As the drama unfolds, it's clear that this isn't just a dispute over paternity. It's an audition for the most dramatic episode yet, with everyone playing their part to perfection. You won't believe what happens next, as the saga continues to unravel in the most unexpected ways. Nobody in my family looked like that. And just by looking at this child, you've determined and said to yourself, he's I not, do not believe that's he, my he, grandchild. That, that can't happen. There's no way. Ms. Jackson, obviously you have a different opinion. So why do you think she's in so much doubt over your child? I have no idea, to be honest. Maybe because he is so white? Because he's all the white white. He ain't got no black I, in here. Uh, everything I see got mm -hmm. uh, powder puff on it. I don't see no chocolate nowhere, okay? No, ma'am. Whatever. Was he the only person you were intimate with during that time? Yes, ma'am. Now, she knows she lying. Can I, can she I lying. She lying. Yes, ma'am. Has been in our life. She's never was a girlfriend. You are a vampire. You are just a fly by night. We didn't know anything about you. He's been in a relationship for 10 years. Mr. How Hughes has. <clears throat> in 10 years. In he got 10 years. Babies he got, he's been by another for two woman. Years, and for those are my grandchildren. For all she has done is she's been trying to put the baby on us. I can't believe the audacity of the accusations flying. The episode takes us on a roller coaster through the tangled web of family drama, where Ms. McBirth and Ms. Terrell serve some serious tea about Ms. Jackson, accusing her of basically trying to drop off the baby like a surprise package from an unknown sender. This opens up a can of worms, highlighting the family feud that's more complex than a season of soap operas. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more twisted, hold on for the next scene. I seen him at the doctor's office while I was taking his real children to the doctor, and it was a newborn, and I 
I walked past them, and I kind of looked, glanced over there, and I seen this little white baby. I knew it wasn't mine, and I ain't had nothing else to say or do about it since then. That child is not my son's baby. Uh -huh. Elijah she told is me very wasn't, he wasn't, white. She told me she didn't know who the father was. She First, she changed her story up different times about who's the father. At first, when, when I first met the girl, she said, okay, I asked her, I said, okay, this is my brother's baby. She said, yes. I said, I said do you know or do you think? So when we yeah, asked while right. she was pregnant, we asked her for a DNA test. And what did she say? She was like, oh, okay. She was all for it. At, at that time frame, she was all for it, the DNA test. Ms. McBirth, who's clearly had enough of what she calls the grandchild subscription service, her son seems to have signed her up for, airs her grievances. It's a vivid illustration of how her son's carefree distribution of his DNA has turned family gatherings into episodes of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Stay tuned, because the drama escalates in ways you won't believe. Sick of all these little hookers trying to say my son is a daddy. I'm okay. sick of it. I get babies dropped off here, dropped off there. I'm sick I'm not of it. it. But it, it stops What's today. That's the thing that she it does. Is. Here's I'm the sorry. That's a lie. Yes, no, that's it's a not. lie. Just had a wild sex party that got shut down by the police station last week. Hello. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. There's in this That house. is not true. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Why is your neighbors complaining about the sex that goes on in your there household? There was no sex yes. going on. No, read the police report. If okay, you want to read the police report. The debate heats up as they start comparing the kids' curls to the family's varying hair textures and examining Hughes's rainbow of a family tree. It's like they're trying to solve a mystery with a game of guess who instead of genetics. This quirky interrogation session eventually leads to the much-anticipated DNA test reveal, turning the moment into a reality TV finale that nobody wants to miss. Trust me, what comes next will leave you speechless. Do you believe you are Elijah's father? I just gave him the benefit of the doubt because I'm biracial. My father's white, you know? So he... That child is not my son, okay? She got men's coming and going in and out of her house. My father's we don't a know. brown hair, blue eyed dude, so. How you know? He just gonna say that because, you know, she gonna freak him after this. He is. What that boy has no features. He has no features of nobody in Jerome, my family. Jerome, pass me Miss McBurt's there, evidence. There's, there's no features. You don't look like nobody. Uh, all I know. my grandbabies don't have a bridge on their nose. That like little boy got a bridge. My, ch my, my grandchildren all look alike. Every last one. All of his, his kids, all his so kids. So wait, look we're, like. we're looking at the bridge of the nose. Right. And you're saying none of those match. None of those. Yeah. Just when you thought it couldn't get any more dramatic, the climactic moment hits like a surprise birthday party with the DNA test results. With a bombshell drops into the family's lap, challenging their accusations and denial with the subtlety of a flying pie. The room erupts into emotional outbursts, a mix of gasps, tears, and possibly a fainting relative or two, turning the scene into something straight out of a soap opera blooper reel. Two-year-old Elijah Jackson, and whether Mr. Hughes is the father, Mr. Hughes, you are Elijah's father. No! No! That's a lie! That's the a lie! That is a lie! That's a lie! That's not true! No, that's a damn lie. I'm sick of that. The curtain rises on the dramatic spectacle of Beckley versus Allen, with Ms. Beckley stepping into the legal ring, gloves up, ready to pin down Mr. Allen as the biological dad of her kiddo, Idale. On the other corner, Mr. Allen is ducking and weaving, trying to dodge the paternity jab, all while juggling the grenades of relationship drama with his fiance. This isn't just any old court case. It's the emotional heavyweight championship of the world. Just when you think you've seen it all, brace yourself for the next act. Ms. Beckley, you are in court today to prove Mr. Allen Alan is the biological father of your one-year-old daughter, Italy Beck. Yes, Your Honor. You say Mr. Allen has only seen his daughter one time since she has been born, and you want him to take responsibility starting today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. You are more than certain you are not Italy's biological father and claim Ms. Beckley's accusations are driving a wedge. Absolutely gobsmacked, Ms. Beckley grabs the mic not to drop some sick beats, but to lay down the hard truth about Mr. Allen's vanishing act since Italy's grand entrance. She's not just spilling tea, she's unloading the whole teapot, blasting Mr. Allen with the scorching reality of flying solo with a kiddo. Her tear-jerking rant sends a clear message, Mr. Allen, it's high time to grow up and join the adult table. The stage is set for a dazzling comeback, and you won't believe what's about to go down next. I just feel like you should be a dad to her, because you are her father. And you feel like he's just neglecting your child. Yes, ma'am. He's neglecting her with the other two kids we have. And it's like, he's in their life, but you're not in hers. And it makes me feel like, like, wow, like, really? Look at her. 
hold your horses, here comes Mr. Allen, storming the stage with a plot twist juicier than a gossip magazine. His doubts about being Itale's dad, thanks to the wibbly-wobbly timing of their breakup. The air's thick with suspense as they exchange blows over Itale's backstory, turning the courtroom into a soap opera stage. It's a mix of Maury and Sherlock Holmes all wrapped in one. And guess what? The drama's far from over. You're gonna want to see what's coming up next. Um, Germany's and Xavier's birth certificate, hers is not signed. So the first one is for Germany, Jacqueline, and Allen. Father's name's there. Second one, Xavier, Dantes, Tyrell, Jerome, Allen. Father's name is there. You didn't even give her his last name. He don't deserve it. Your he Honor, don't deserve I it. I was there for my other two children by her. I even raised her other daughter, Your Honor. How could you tell me I don't deserve something you when I stood my You wasn't there. there. How you children? deserve her? How she deserve your last name? Boom. Mr. Allen drops the bomb that Ms. Beckley turned down a DNA test twice, sparking his paternity doubts. It's like they're in their own courtroom drama, hashing out who's the daddy with all the emotional turmoil and legal roadblocks you'd expect. It's like watching a soap opera minus the dramatic gasps from the audience. Hang on tight, because the next part is a real doozy. And now you're telling me I don't deserve it? I have, I have children, and all of them have my last name. I didn't have my biological father in my life, so I would be, it would be a shame for me not to step up for mine. You denied her from the the point I told you I was pregnant to now. Point is, I'm trying to understand your doubt, Mr. Allen. She denied me the DNA twist not once, but twice. Out of the blue, the judge chimes in on the Ms. Beckley versus Mr. Allen showdown, pointing out their little ones caught in the crossfire of their squabbles. It's like the judge is a step away from handing them a coupon for group therapy, or maybe suggesting they hash it out in a tug of war. Just when you think it can't get any wilder, the next bit is gonna have you clutching your popcorn, wondering what on earth can happen next. I'm starting to understand what's going on here. This is a dance, y'all. You know this choreography. Arguing and dysfunction and yelling and back and forth. You all do this well. Your Honor, I, I stepped away, And Your this Honor. little girl is the one suffering because she's a year old with no father. The judge gives Mr. Allen a pep talk on dad duties, stressing the importance of being a quality dad over being a dad to a whole troop. It's like the judge is hinting at Mr. Allen to chill with the baby making and focus on the kids he already has. Imagine the judge saying, Mr. Allen, life ain't a Pokemon game. You can't just collect them all. Give some love to the ones you've got. With a dash of humor and a lot of real talk, the judge basically tells Mr. Allen to trade in quantity for quality, or he might as well get Father's Day cards in bulk. And if you thought this was intense, just wait for what's coming next. I work hard for every dollar I to provide for my children. If that's the case, I wouldn't have my beautiful fiance with me. She know that I work hard as a man to provide for my children. Mr. Allen, you brought a witness I'd like to hear from her. Before she say anything, Your Honor, she has nothing to do with it. Whatever she says, it's false and it's irrelevant. She don't All know right. me, I don't know her. Okay, let me be the judge of that since I'm the judge. State your name for the record. Cheyenne Montgomery, I'm Darius' fiance, Your Honor. She has told Darius that he was not the father. Okay, y'all got proof of that, and y'all fiancés, what a ring at? Girl, mind your business. What a ring at, right? You, you have no business. That's why you're here. You're speaking with because you worried about. Was you in the bed for me and him when we had her? No. The DNA test confirms that. In the case of Beckley versus Allen, when it comes one year old, Italy, Beckley, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Allen, are the father. Told you. You too, fiancé. Stepmama. Stop.